For more on the turf grass industry, we're joined by Dennis Martin, a turf grass extension specialist. And Dennis, let's start off talking about where we are right now and what goes on in this little corner of campus. Right. Well, we're at the uh, Turf Grass Research Center, which is part of the uh, Oklahoma Botanical Garden Arboretum Complex, and specifically we're at the teaching plots. These are used to show our undergraduate students as well as the general public the various turf grass species that can be grown successfully in Oklahoma. Uh, there's uh, about 16 different turf grass species that can be used, but generally only about five of those get regular usage. And the major ones are here at the teaching plots. And you let people kind of walk around and kind of pick out what their, their favorites are? Is that typically what you ask when, when folks visit here? That's right. Uh, we do a little informal survey and have them pick out their favorite ones. And oftentimes, uh, not surprisingly, they go to the finest textured, most dense types. But unfortunately, many times uh, they aren't able to manage those properly, so we kind of steer them to the more coarse and open types, which work better for consumers. Now, you study all types and varieties, and this is, this is a really broader industry than, than I even realized. Talk a little bit more about what the program is like here at OSU and, and what you guys do. Great. Well, the turf grass program, like many programs at Oklahoma State University, is engaged in teaching, research, and extension, the threefold mission of the land-grant institution. And uh, our research uh, and teaching and extension does work with golf course superintendents, parks and grounds managers, lawn care operators, sports field managers, and of course the general public as well for their lawns. Uh, research uh, generally can be testing varieties that are available on the shelf, but also Oklahoma State University Turf Grass Program breeds and develops Bermuda grasses for the uh, transition zone and upper region of uh, Bermuda grass adaptation. We focus on improved uh, cold tolerance and then also on uh, improved quality in cold tolerant varieties. And what are some of the varieties that are kind of in the works now that you can discuss? I understand this is really a, a long-term process. A lot more goes into it than people may realize. Yes, the turf grass breeding effort started in 1986 and it released its first varieties uh, in the early 2000 time frame. Uh, those varieties have included uh, cold tolerant Bermuda grasses, Yukon and Riviera, which are seeded types, and many people realize that Riviera was used uh, on one of the, uh, or actually three of the Olympic uh, baseball fields at the Beijing Olympics. And then we've also released uh, vegetative types Patriot. And then actually this year we've released Northbridge and Latitude 36, which are being licensed out to sod producers as we speak. And there's a lot that goes into it. It takes years to actually get a, a variety to the point where it can be released and, and used more widespread. That's right. It took almost 14 years for the first varieties to be produced from the time of inception of the program. But now it's a mature program and it's generating a variety approximately every two years. Uh, current uh, release efforts have been on cold tolerant improved uh, quality types. But our next initiative will be on improving drought tolerance of Bermuda grass to make it even more drought tolerant than it already is. And what are some of the specifics as you look to develop these drought tolerant varieties? What are you, what are you really looking at closely? Okay, well for most landscape turf situations, people don't require a real rapid spreading type to recover from traffic because on commercial lawns and our home lawns, generally there's very little traffic. So we don't need uh, a type that spreads real rapidly and thus requires a lot of edging. Uh, the visual appearance and soil stabilization and staying green under less water use in a drought is the more important features. So we'll be uh, focusing on improving drought tolerance such that you can use less water and that the turf grass will stay greener longer into the drought. The net result will be conservation of water. And we, we talk about urban agriculture and the, and the beautification industry, but a lot of this really is, is for average folks in, in their homes and in their yards too that you're developing long term? That's right. Uh, many times folks uh, will have a lawn that they're dissatisfied with and they want to uh, reach out and see what seeded types or sodded types that they should be installing better adapted varieties. That's part of our master gardener training effort and our outreach consumer effort and we're here testing and developing recommendations for better varieties and in some cases and in, in the area of Bermuda grass, uh, Oklahoma State University is actually the breeder and developer of those improved varieties. So there's really a lot to it. Quite a bit. Okay, Dennis Martin, thanks a lot. And for more information on Oklahoma State University's turf grass program, you can go to our website at sunup.okstate.edu.